bear in mind, I mean, the One Billion Rising campaign is about the fact that one in three women around the world will be beaten or raped in her lifetime. If also we're kind of saying what matters about them is not their brains, but their boobs. What matters about them is how they're perceived, not what they want to say themselves. So for me, it wasn't ever an either or, you know, um, may come as a shock to some of the men's rights activists, but feminists can multitask, you know. <laughs> we can care both about structural pay inequalities, violence against women, and the perception of women. It's not an either or, it's about how all these things support each other to oppress 51% of the population. I mean, that's what the patriarchy is. Sure, thanks. I'm gonna move on now um, to the general elections. Sure. Uh, the most recent poll that I've seen, Labour are ahead on 34%, um, and the uh, Tories are just 1% behind 33 um, do you think we, we're going to see a Labour government, a, a, a majority Labour government, oh. in May? And Listen, I, I, I certainly yeah. hope so. The reason why I look so tired today is because I've been campaigning non-stop and trying to help candidates around the country and support people and make the case. Obviously, I have to get myself re-elected. I will be standing again for Labour in um, Labour on the Court Party, in fact, in Walthamstow. The honest truth is, at the moment, it feels very uncertain to me because... It's not that people don't have opinions, but they don't necessarily connect that to politics. And so actually when you talk to people at the election, although they're very passionate about all sorts of issues, they have big views about you know, what's facing the country and what the, the challenges are maybe for the area that they live in, the things that they really want to see happen in the future. Do they see politics as the process by which those things happen is the big question. So do they think that voting and taking part at all is the big challenge? And you know, I've, I've uh, set up a project called the XX Vote, just return a bit briefly to women, um, which is about the fact that the group in our society who are least likely to register vote, least likely to participate, are young women aged 18 to 24. Young women aged 18 to 24 have plenty to give the world. They have a, a huge range of opinions, lots of disagreements with things I would stand for about um, how the world should be, but they don't see the political process for them. Um, and going out campaigning, a lot of the time when you're talking to people, even if they have a view on a political party, whether that will translate into them actually taking part in the election, whether people, although they feel that there are big choices to be made, feel that in this building that's where it's happening is, is the challenge for all of us as politicians. So, you know, a lot of my job is trying to convince people that change can be made and therefore to think about the changes they want to see being made. That's which important. is perhaps different from, it's going to make it sound awful to say it, but when I was your age and when I was <laughs> first involved in campaigning, when people... When turnout was higher and people had a sense that it it was really important to take part, but they were looking at particular different parties and trying to decide which one they would vote for. You know, it's a very different circumstance when you're trying to get cut through people's frank, frankly indifference to traditional politics rather than indifference maybe to your political party. Sure, um, uh, there's been some sort of um, concern portrayed, I think, uh, with Ed Miliband as a leader, there's been um, instances where some backbench MPs as well have expressed concern about his leadership. Um, what do you think, personally? Sure. Is he really and, and it's interesting, isn't it, because British politics is becoming a lot more like American politics in that sense, even though this isn't a presidential election. You know, you elect a team. Yeah. Um, and in that sense, for me, Ed Miliband isn't going to win or lose the next election for Labour. Labour will get win the next election or lose the next election on the basis of the team we put forward and the ideas we put forward and how we capture people's imagination. That's a job for all of us. So, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with Ed and he's a good, kind man. And, yeah, you know, a lot of the media coverage is very harsh and doesn't do him justice. But I know my own responsibility, which is to make the case for Labour in Walthamstow and to be part of some of the national campaigns. And I see that for everyone involved in progressive politics. You know, one of the, the problems perhaps for me is that progressive, I've been involved in the Labour movement for 20, over 20 years now, is we can get really grumpy. We can, we can give up on the idea that we can make the case, we can get very frustrated because if you believe that you go into politics not just to change governments but to change lives, it can be really overwhelming if it feels like change isn't happening. I mean, when I first, the first election I ever took part in, which was 1997, it was an article of faith to me that governments made a difference because all my life, all I'd seen as a government I thought was doing terrible things to the country. I stayed involved because I think it does make a difference and I've seen real change. But I also recognise that I've got to convince people that we can change the political process to meet their ambitions in the future. Of course, the leader of the party, the prime minister, will be a big part of that. But that's also about how you work at the grassroots. I mean, that's also about how people feel their role is in all of it. That's why I say people are really indifferent. You know, do you know what difference you will make to Britain in the next 20 years? My job is to get that out of you because that's how we'll make a better country.
Sure, okay, so let's let's talk about how um, Labour is appealing to the young vote. Um, it was mentioned. I love it when I get asked about the young <laughs> vote because it, it, it's a symptom, perhaps, of our politics that people think of me as being involved and a, and a young person. I'm I'm nearly forty, so <laughs> so that, that's the great thing about politics. I can thoroughly recommend it in terms of like what people think of as young carries on yeah. well and past. I was a youth worker before I got elected, and one of the young people I worked with sent me my picture, he downloaded it off the internet, he airbrushed it, sent it to me and said, use this in your leaflet, it will be better. <laughs> I've always known I'm not representative of young people anymore. Have you used that picture then? No, place? no, I just, I had a bit of a cry, <laughs> because I know he meant really well, but it, sure. but it was heartbreaking. <laughs> okay. I was actually going to ask you about the um, £6,000 tuition mm. cap that the Labour, uh, Labour Party is planning to introduce. Um, how, how exactly is this initiative going to be funded? And, um... Sure, um, well it comes through changing pension tax rate relief, but I would say it's really important not to see the tuition fee announcement big as though it is for people, and I know for a lot of people it will hit home because it is a very, you know, 9,000 pounds is a lot of money, so it's a big cut to make, but to see it in the broader context of why it all matters. I went into politics, you know, I, I love Walsham Star, I've lived there for 18 years, it is full of incredibly um, intelligent bright, sparky, cheeky, sarky kids, just like I was at their age, they don't always get the opportunity to succeed. And one of the reasons they don't always get the opportunity to succeed is because their families are living with large amounts of debt because the financial struggle of getting on and getting ahead makes it harder for them to learn, let alone to make the decision to go to university. So yes, if you're thinking about the choices we make as a country, the more people who go to university, the more people who get skills, the more likely they are to be able to, to work in the future world economy and changing the way in which we therefore use our public resources. So right now we subsidise people who get um, pensions of, who earn more than £150,000. That's what we would change um, and that would help pay for this for the, for the cut in fees is, is part of the equation. But the other part of the equation is the more people we can get going to university, the more people we can stop that idea that actually fees stop you going to university, the more they will then go on and earn money and actually pay back money. Um, but it's not on its own the only thing that's going to make a difference. So one of the other things I'm really involved in is a campaign to end unpaid internships. Because I talk to a lot of people from Walthamstow who even when they get a degree are then finding the world of work is closed to them because they don't maybe have the networks to get the work experience or they can't afford to work for free for six months for a company to build up the points on their CV. So I think it's really, really important to see the pledges on um, unpaid in, uh, so the, the pledges on tuition fees in that context of how do we change those odds for a kid from Walthamstow? How do we change their odds so we get more apprenticeships into the system? Because we've got a lot of apprenticeships right now that uh, are actually being taken by people over the age of 25. We change the funding system so we get bigger grants and we get we cut the fees and we also open up the world of work once you've got that degree so there's more chance of you getting a foot on the on the career ladder and getting on and getting ahead because we live in the country in the world that has the least social mobility of all, and that should shame all of us. That means that there's really bright, talented young people in places like Walthamstow not getting those chances to succeed. We're talking about young people in mm -hmm. jobs. Let's talk about, very quickly, um, young people in politics, because you're someone who got involved in politics pretty young. Um, how can you... Yes, it was a long time ago. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, we've seen yeah. now that um, young people find it quite difficult to get involved in politics. Why do you think that is and how do you think that, that can change? I don't think it's so much about 